So we just finished up checking the resistance of all the um, um, inputs and outputs um, to the power supply, making sure there's no dead short, that there's some resistance on each circuit. Now we're going to power it up. You notice we've actually had this guy unplugged, that's the safest bet, and um, actually shut off. Now we're going to plug this power supply back in and um, actually check the overall amp load. Before we do that, we're going to switch our meter to oops, um, amps, and we're going to set it on the higher load of amps, which would be the 10 amp. And we're going to put our leads in series with the 24 volt supply. Um, to do that, we're going to pull this guy apart and put one lead in one section. Hold on just a second. Took two hands to do that, but we've got um, one lead. So now the supply to this whole machine has to come through this lead right here into the multimeter and um, supply the circuit uh, by coming out the other lead and feeding our terminal block. Now when we turn this on, um, right now I'm seeing a minimal load that's just air. Um, turn this on and watch our overall amperage. Now the only thing we're not doing here, and we have uh, you know probably three milliamps, which is nothing. It's probably within the error margin of the uh, meter itself. And we're looking pretty good here. Um, the only thing we're not doing is lining up our reed switches to possibly be um, closed or actuated um, using a magnet. We can come along and, and, and trip most of the uh, reed switches or just placing the gripper so that it's you know both open and closed to make sure that the amp draw when we do that isn't higher or significantly higher. Um, and right, look at that, it isn't. So that's it, just putting an ammeter in the direct supply to the whole machine, making sure that while it's nothing is supposed to be energized, the uh, milliamp or the overall current is very low.